Okay, we have just about finished Revelation 11. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> we got at least one more program to get through. Revelation 11 is a little complicated. Uh, in a way, because we've already gone through this Revelation 10 Millerite movement and the great disappointment, and it seems like we're out of the Dark Ages already, and now we're going back into the Dark Ages. That's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But the reason for that is because Revelation chapter 10 is kind of what I call an interlude. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a pause in the flow. See, we've been going through the seven trumpets. And in Revelation chapter 9, we finished the sixth trumpet, which is called a second woe. So Revelation 9 has the first woe and the second woe, which is the fifth and sixth trumpets. But where's the seventh trumpet? Well, the seventh trumpet doesn't sound till we get to the end of Revelation chapter 11. Mm. And that is when it mentions, oh, by the way, the second woe has passed and the third woe is coming quickly. And that phrase, that terminology indicates that we've kind of been in an interlude. Mm -hmm. There's kind of been this little bit of a mm, pause. Let's look at some stuff that's taking place in the world, developments that are taking place. In the world. Oh, now let's get back on track again. So I think Revelation chapter 10 is this interlude. And out of that interlude comes this reflection back into the Dark Ages and some of the things that were taking place that, 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 do, that brought the development of the Millerite movement and the emphasis on measuring the temple, measuring the altar, and those that worship therein. And what we've seen that brought those developments and that message is, is a darkness. A darkness that excluded the Word of God the witness for God, mm -hmm. a darkness that, that brought persecution against the Bible. We're going to see that more and more. And that darkness out of which the Millerite movement came was to proclaim a fuller, clearer picture of the character of God, what he's really like, because he's been obscured, his witness has been obscured, the Bible's been obscured. So that's what we've got so far. Yeah. I think it, it would be good to really show the flow mm -hmm. of the book of Revelation. Okay. And I'm actually, you know, like just seeing this, but it's like, if you look at the seven churches, the seven seals, the seven trumpets, mm -hmm. um, you find, you know, these major events are juiced down into like two, three verses. Yes. So it's like God has given us these little pieces showing us, okay, this is what's been going on, you know, from the time of his ascension to heaven, little pieces here. I just mm -hmm. want to keep you on track, follow the trail, follow the trail, because I really want to take you to the major events that began to occur around 1798 and 1844. Mm. So when we get to Revelation chapter 10, we now have this whole chapter, mm -hmm. right? In Revelation 11, this whole chapter. Revelation 12 and 13, they're like these major chapters where the whole chapter is talking about a single event, event as it were. Mm. So uh, it's, it's almost as, as though God is giving us little steps mm -hmm. that lead us to that yeah. crescendo of, all right, this is the main emphasis. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that this is the time period we're talking about. This is the main time period of, you know, 1798, 1844 and what occurs beyond. But to make sure you got that right, I'm going to give you these little steps mm -hmm. that take you and crescendo in this Revelation 10, 11. And once we get to Revelation, I mean, we've gotten Revelation 10, but we'll see 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Mm -hmm. All just almost like you can separate those. They're the middle, they're the, they are the, the meat. They're the center of the sandwich. They're the center of the sandwich. Mm -hmm. Like this is what God needs us mm -hmm. to understand. Mm -hmm. So one through nine are the clues mm -hmm. that get us to, mm -hmm. yeah, in Revelation 10, we know we're talking about this time period. And once we get to that time period, 11 and 12, 13, 14, we can have a clear understanding of the meat mm -hmm. of what God is trying to show us, especially at the end of time. All right, let's pray together and yeah. let's get into it right now. Yes. Yep. Jason, you want to pray for us? Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, you have some uh, powerful messages that you want to share with us today. We ask uh, for your Holy Spirit to uh, lead, guide, and direct us into all truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We call it, in, in a theological terminology, we call it es eschatological. Mm -hmm. Eschatological means... What? You mentioned that the other day. End time prophecy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I was saying... God wants to take us to the end time prophecies where he really explodes out the details of what we're going to be facing. And so when you start Revelation, the first 
churches, seals, trump it's kind of history leading up to that, history leading up to that, list history leading up to that. And now all of a sudden, the last part of Revelation is all eschatological in emphasis and focus. There's a little bit of history there, but boom, it's giving us all the details. Mm -hmm. So I really, that's a, a good, really good way to try to explain what we're doing here, what, how the journey is taking mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's pick up where we left off in verse 5. Uh, Yvonne, can you read that for us, verse 5? Sure. Because we've identified the two olive trees and the two candlesticks, right. the Word of God, the testimony for God's Word, and so now we're going to go into more details and characteristics <laughs> so we can really nail it down. Right. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Okay, so, so Ivor, you're going to take this for us, okay? Yeah. But I just want to say this. Just because we've identified that the Bible, Old and New Testament as the, as the witnesses, now we want to make sure and, cl and confirm that identification. We want to make sure it hits all the characteristics. So how does it meet the characteristics of verse 5? Right. It's met, it's, so far it's met the ones previous. How does it meet these characteristics? Mm. Mm. Right, so let's go over to Revelation chapter 22. And uh, what we have, we'll look at verses uh, 18 and uh, 19. Okay. And um, before we read that, uh, let's see, here we go. Um, what we see happening in verse 5 is that there's this sort of like, look, you do this to, to, to my witnesses, the same thing will happen to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the, the gist of what's being said here. You hurt them, in that manner, you will be hurt. So, mm -hmm. Revelation 22, verse 18 and 19. Uh, um, Jason, you want to read that for us? Sure. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Mm. Okay. So here you see the same principle mm -hmm. regarding the word of God. Yes. You heard the word of God? you're going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. You take away from the word, your name's going to be taken out of the book of life. You add to, you're going to, you, you know, you're going to, the plague's going to be added to you. Mm -hmm. So we find it fits uh, another description mm -hmm. of the characteristics we're looking for with these two witnesses. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the word of God, the Old and New Testament. Mm -hmm. So we can go back to our chat. And did you want to add anything to that? No, James? that's perfect. That okay. fits perfectly. It's another characteristic that is fulfilled. Right. Good. So now we go to verse six. Uh, verse six. Yvonne, can you read that for us? Sure. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Continue. Okay. So That's we can good. go ahead and, and we, we actually talked about this in our previous program. We did. These two things were performed by Elijah. Elijah. Um, spoke by the word of the Lord, right. mm -hmm. and uh, the word of the Lord said, it will not rain for these mm -hmm. three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And by the same word of the Lord, uh, in the book of Exodus chapter four, mm -hmm. you have Moses bringing plagues upon Egypt. Mm -hmm. And so, um, again, it's showing us that these two witnesses, uh, the Old and New Testament, the word of God, yes. mm -hmm. is the source through which the prophet spoke mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and brought these plagues or these, you know, calamities upon the earth. And so, um, again, uh, we see that it fits, you know, it's fitting the characteristics that are laid out for us in Revelation chapter 11. These two witnesses mm -hmm. are the word of God, the Old and New Testament. Anything you want to add, James? No, nope. now there's All more right. description of them. Uh, Yvonne, can you read for us uh, verses 7? and eight. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Okay. So this, we're looking for a beast now. Yes. Okay. Now let's see if we can remember this in the Bible, and actually we haven't even covered this yet. Mm -mm. So in the Bible, um, a Bible beast prophecy. is symbolic of a nation. Okay, we can go to the book of Daniel, kingdom, chapter seven. Nation, That's kings, right. That's Daniel right. seven, verses 17 mm -hmm. and 23. So let's read those two verses, yep. just mm -hmm. so our viewers have those verses under their belt. Mm -hmm. Daniel chapter seven, and I believe it's 17 and 23, which identify 
beasts as kings and kingdoms. Mm -hmm. so 17 and 23? Yep. Mm -hmm. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Verse 23 says, uh, Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be di diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. All right, kings and kingdoms, kings and ki on the earth, earthly kings and kingdoms. So a beast that sends out of the bottomless pit, we already identified the bottomless pit when we studied chapter 9. Mm -hmm. The bottomless pit is this the earth in a state of darkness, mm -hmm. in a state of chaos, the dark ages. What kingdom, what earthly power came out of the dark ages? What, did the, what kingdom was produced by the chaos and the darkness and the obscuring of God's character in the dark ages? There was a power or a kingdom that is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Mm -hmm. Sodom mm -hmm. and Egypt. Now, mm -hmm. it's interesting, Egypt in the Bible represents a nation that denied the existence of God. We can read that in Exodus chapter 5 and verse 2. Exodus 5 and verse 2. When Moses was sent eventually to Pharaoh, uh, Moses was to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. But he said it this way, a confirmation of what we've been talking about. Thus says the Lord, mm. thus says Jehovah, mm. let my people go. And you know what Pharaoh's response was? Mm. Who is Jehovah that I should let his mm. people go? I don't know Jehovah, neither will I let his people go, Exodus 5, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a, a, an earthly kingdom that denies the existence of God. I don't know Jehovah. Who is this Jehovah? There's no. So when we see the spiritual Egypt here, it says spiritually Egypt, it's going to be a, a power that denies the existence of God. And what we call that today is atheism an atheistic power, mm -hmm. a power that denies the existence of God. Mm -hmm. So did an atheistic power arise out of the dark ages and make war upon the Bible, mm -hmm. upon the two witnesses? We should, we should add to that, you know, again, we're, we're putting our clues together and mm -hmm. then all we need to do is go look in history and say, okay, so we know what we're looking for, is it in history? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But something interesting in Revelation 11 verse, uh, the latter part of verse 7, mm -hmm. it says, uh, this beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Okay? Kill them. In other words, uh, this is getting rid of the two witnesses. Mm -hmm. When you get rid of the Bible, like, mm -hmm. hey, I don't believe in the Bible. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist. It's not. That is, again, summarizing the simple term atheist. Mm -hmm. We're looking for a kingdom that would arise sometime around the close of the 1700s, sometime around 1798. And I, we shouldn't say a kingdom that arises. Yeah, a power, what we should say power. is, you know, a, a kingdom in which this atheistic spirit yes. would, uh, dominate. would dominate, would mm -hmm. present itself. And here's what's interesting about this is that um, atheism has always existed, mm. okay? Mm. But never... Pharaoh, for example. Yeah, Pharaoh and, you know, people have been... But rem during the Dark Ages, you said you were an atheist. It was death. It was death. Mm. So people weren't, as it were, coming out of the closet being an atheist, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But here we have a, a nation in which all of a sudden it becomes that the people are like, they're coming out of the closet, if mm -hmm. you will. Mm -hmm. Like, yep, we are, we do not believe in God. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for a nation that fits that characteristics. The term Sodom mm -hmm. uh, represents lawlessness. Yes. So you remember, mm -hmm. you know, God Immorality. destroyed Sodom because of immorality, licentiousness, mm -hmm. which is what happens when you get rid of the, the, the word of God, mm -hmm. right? So there's only one nation that fits this. As we look in history, mm -hmm. we see that it is France, mm -hmm. and it is a French revolution, revolution mm -hmm. which occurred why? Because of all the, yes. because of the mystery Darkness. of iniquity, yes. mm. right? Mm -hmm. That had changed the character of God. Yes, God burns people forever and ever. Go down the list. Mm -hmm. The people of France rejected the picture, the counterfeit picture of, God. of who God is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in, in doing so, they turned their wrath upon, guess what? The Bible. The Word of God. The Word of God, mm -hmm. which is exactly what happened during the French Revolution. Mm -hmm. Because the French Revolution, um, for the first time, a, an entire nation declared that there was no God mm. and made it legal. Mm. So this we see is what occurs. Mm. In other words, it fulfills to mm. a T mm -hmm. the prophecy that, that we're talking about. The history fits the prophecy. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
And there was an intensity that took place here. What's really interesting, it says that they shall kill them. And then it says in verse 8, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And, and in verse 9 it says, And they of the people and the kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three, and a half, three days and a half. Which if you do that prophetically, day for a year, that's going to come out to three and a half years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the French Revolution, the intensity of the French Revolution lasted exactly three and a half years. Uh -huh. When the Bible was prescribed, when it was burned in the streets, when it just laid there, all the nations are looking out, whoa, France has gotten rid of the Bible. They've got this revolution that's taking place and, and they're doing away with, with all of the morality and it's become like Sodom and Gomorrah and, and they're denying the existence of God and that continued for three and a half years. Thousands of people lost their lives. People had to flee. The monarchy was destroyed. It all went down and, and eventually then they kind of came out of that and they, they tried to kind of do a little bit of a of a recovery from that, but that still never fully recovered. I think, I think still to this day, the country of France is the highest in, in its atheist population of all the nations of Europe, mm -hmm. all, those, wow. all those Western nations anyway. And so, and so it comes out of that just a little bit, but for three and a half years, Bible's dead. Yeah, there was actually a ban mm. that was placed on the Bible. Mm -hmm. That ban lasted literally three and a half years. Mm -hmm. mm. It was lifted and uh, I, I should have brought the research with me, mm -hmm. but there was, you know, the, a decree that went forth three and a half years later through the work of some people who were saying, look, look at what's happening to our streets because we have banned religion. We at least need to allow them the freedom to, to have it. We don't need to believe it, but we need to allow them the freedom. Mm -hmm. And um, it went through their court system and just about the three and a half year mark, mm -hmm. they decided, okay, we're going to allow the churches to open again. We're going to allow the Bible to be, you know, possessed and all those different things. So it is fulfilling the prophecy down to a T, which brings us right to, you know, the, the fact that it says there, the two witnesses came to life. Yes. Mm -hmm. Voltaire. Verse 11. Voltaire. It's very interesting in the mm -hmm. story of Voltaire, who mm -hmm. was part of the French Revolution and said that Christianity would die out. Mm -hmm. um, when, when the decree was lifted, it is interesting because right after that, the Bible began to be published mm -hmm. uh, and pushed like it had never been before. Because mm -hmm. remember, during the Dark Ages, it was sackcloth. Mm -hmm. right. You know, a little bit here, a little bit there. People heavily still, persecuted. Yeah, heavily persecuted. If you had a Bible, you could die. Right. So people didn't, didn't have the access to the Bible that they had until after the French Revolution, yep. and Voltaire's house became one of the major mm -hmm. printing places for yep. the Bible after he died. Yep. Mm. Yeah. They set up a publishing house there. Yeah. And that's what it means in verse 11. It says here, And after three days and a half, the Spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. That is in Europe. Great fear was the fact that, you know, you can't just get rid of the Bible. Look what happens when you get rid of the Bible. The whole, whole of Europe is saying, look what happens when you get rid of the Bible. So then what they do is, verse 12, and they, I heard a great voice from heaven saying, come up, saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. And so basically what's happening is the Bible has been exalted now. The Bible's been lifted up. Mm. All of these Bible societies are developing in, in, in the late 18th century, early 19th century, and the Bible's being printed even in Voltaire's house. The Bible's being printed in, in many different languages to all these different nations. And then verse 12, and they heard a great voice from, oh, excuse me, verse 13, and that same hour there was a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake was slain of men 7,000, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. Now, that same hour means in the same time frame that this is going on. So basically, this is just a rehash of what's happened. In that time frame, France was shaken like an earthquake, mm -hmm. spiritually shaken. Mm -hmm. And in that same time, one-tenth of the city. When we're talking about one-tenth here, we're talking about the, the ten horns or the ten nations of Europe. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about one-tenth being France. France was shaken and 7,000 were slain. 7,000 is a number that is used in the Old Testament to represent God's people. Mm. Remember when Elijah was fleeing? Yes. And he said, I'm the only one left. Yeah. It's just me. And God says, hey, I got 7,000. Mm. The faithful, bowed, yes. Mm. So the faithful, during this time, the faithful have been persecuted and slain. So all of this, this verse 13 is just kind of rehashing. But the remnant were afraid. The people that remained in these other nations, they said, no, we never want this to happen to us. And they gave glory to God. 
So this kind yeah. of a rehash of. So I want you to notice a um, couple of things here. Mm -hmm. We talked about this in the last program. In verse 12, it says they ascended up to heaven in a what? Cloud. In a cloud, and their enemies beheld them, okay? We're talking just around 1798, right? Mm -hmm. Very close to the year 1798. If we go back to Revelation chapter 10, that being, right, with his face shining like the sun and clothed in the cloud, mm -hmm. he's standing upon the sea and the earth, and he, he tells us that we know that this is occurring at the end of, according to Daniel, mm -hmm. time, times, and a half. At the end of the 1260 years. Mm -hmm. In Revelation 11, the book is ascending up in, it, into, the, into the cloud. In Revelation 10, it's almost as if it's, it's the same time. Mm -hmm. The angel has his hand, in his hand, this book, and it's open. And he's giving it, right, to his people. It's going to be sweet in your mouth, mm -hmm. bitter in your belly. Mm -hmm. Well, what is the message they started preaching? Started preaching uh, the message that is found in Revelation chapter 14, mm -hmm. verses 6 and 7, which say what? Fear God. Fear God and give glory to him. Okay, just pause right there and let's read verse 13 again. Mm -hmm. The remnant. Mm -hmm. That word. The remnant. The remnant. Mm. The remnant mm -hmm. were affrighted. Yep. That word really means fear. Fear. They feared and gave glory, glory to the God, God of heaven. Mm. The people who were watching mm -hmm. what was happening in the, in the mm -hmm. French Revolution and saw the calamities, saw the catastrophe. Mm. It's as though saw God was saying, saw what's Bible. happening when you get rid of God. Mm -hmm. Those people, and by the way, William Miller mm -hmm. struggled with, with his faith. Mm -hmm. He kind of wavered between, you know, is the Bible really, mm -hmm. you know, and when he looked back at the he past. He was a deist. He, was he a became deist. a deist. Yeah. Yeah. Before he became a well, Part of the, he, be, he was a deist. Yes. Oh, he was he a raised deist. a Christian, then he became a deist. Yeah. Got in the rag, bad company. Kind of went, you know, and so oh, wow. uh, Miller looking at what happened in the French Revolution and others. You know, the Bible says the remnant that that saw what happened were affrighted, and it's very interesting that it would use this term. They were affrighted or feared mm -hmm. and gave glory to the God of heaven. This is the exact term that is being used in the preaching of the three angels' messages. In other words... That's amazing. That's a great the, connection. Yeah, the French yeah. Revolution to help people to see, plus mm -hmm. the prophecy being fulfilled, mm -hmm. because remember, in connection with this, we're going to see that the papacy received its deadly wound. All of this led the people to go, we need to give glory to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what the first angels' messages that began to be preached as a result of the book that had ascended up into the cloud and now being opened and given to the people, they go forward preaching this message. Mm -hmm. Fear God. Mm -hmm. Fear God. Mm -hmm. Give glory to him. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the hour of his judgment is coming. How do we know that? Because 1798, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Look at what events happened with the fall of the papacy, with the French Revolution that occurred two or three years before that. Look at all these things that have happened. They are signs that Jesus is coming again. Mm -hmm. Fear God and give glory to him. Mm -hmm. That is a really good connection, Ivor, and, and I really believe that you've got, in a sense, two bookends here. Mm. The bookend that, that Ivor just mentioned here is verse 13, because verse 14 is going to get back on track now. Oh, by the way, the second woe has passed me, the mm -hmm. third woe comes quickly. Mm -hmm. So what God is doing here is he's, as he's going through the history of the trumpets and he's giving us this little interlude of the Millerite movement, it's kind of a pause in there. He's saying now, in the context of the French Revolution, there is a development in history that causes people to see what happens when you get rid of the Bible. Mm -hmm. When you get rid of the Bible, you see this catastrophe take place on planet Earth, and that causes people to go, whoa. Because at first, it says in verse 10 here, um, they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Tormented. So at first it's like, you know, the mm -hmm. Bible, it torments us, it vexes us, it's so difficult and it's so hard and so we're so glad these witnesses are gone. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, well, what happens when the witnesses are actually gone? Whoa, this is, this is, this is terrible. This is what God has been trying to keep us from. Yeah. So there's this bookend that basically takes us back um, or not takes us back, but takes us forward to the ultimate proclamation of the gospel at the end. And then there's a bookend at the beginning. And the bookend at the beginning was this idea of measuring God, measuring the character of God, which takes us to the everlasting gospel also, because the everlasting gospel says, 
fear God and give glory to Him for the hour of His judgment is come. Mm -hmm. So you've got the hour of His judgment connected with the first part of Revelation 11, and you've got giving glory to Him connected with the last part of Revelation. Mm -hmm. Those two bookends yeah. that call us to give glory to God and, and His judgment are in the, yeah, are in, are boxing up what happens when you reject God and when you persecute God and when you do away with the Bible and when you just mm -hmm. let it go. Mm -hmm. But remember, the reason that they rejected God is because of a misrepresentation yes. yep. of the two witnesses, yes. right? Yes. They're clothed in sackcloth. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of interesting because, um, you know, who clothed them in sackcloth? Mm. You know what I mean? I mean, sackcloth, it just looks like, oh, you know, it looks depressing. It lo yeah. who, put, who made the Bible yeah. look like that? Right. You know, it was almost like yes. the papacy itself was yeah. like, yeah. The, and it caused this book to be viewed in a way that was depressing. That was vexing. That vexing. was tormenting. You know, man. We've been just, tormented. Oh, the, mm. oh I'm so glad tormented. we're free from that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, this yeah. book is depressing. Why? Because they, the church made it appear so. They made it look like, yeah, man, you, what? If you, you know mm -hmm. that if you uh, don't keep the first day of Ouch, the week, you toes. know what God's going to do? My toes. God is Definitely going to toes. do this, right? This and if you don't do this, us. yeah, if you don't do this, God mm -hmm. is going to, and it made the people, it was presented in such mm -hmm. a way that made the character of God just like, all right, if this is who God is, mm -hmm. I don't want anything to do. Okay, you're talking to us right now. Yeah. You're talking to us right now. Yeah. The witness has to be right. Yes. The bottom line of the message in Revelation 11 so far is the witness has to be right. Yeah. In the beginning at the end, God doesn't want people to toss the Bible out. He doesn't want them to go through what's going to happen when you reject the Word of God, mm. the two witnesses. But at the same time, we've got to be able to show people what God is really like. Mm. Mm. We, we've got to be able to see, they've got to be able to see the altar, the sacrifice of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we've got to be a witness, a light to that. So people, when they stand back and they, they have this, this awesome fear of God, mm -hmm. the fear that comes from seeing how good He really is, from seeing the Bible lifted up and seeing the gospel exalted, that's where you're bringing it home to our hearts right now, Ivor, where, where we as Christians need to come up higher and do better mm. than what happened in the Dark Ages. That's right. Mm. Well, we are out of time, pretty much. Yeah. So we're not done with Revelation 11 yet because we've still got the third woe. we got to cover the third woe, and we will cover the third woe in our next session together. But as far as questions go, Jason, what, what, how can people get a hold of us? Mm -hmm. They should email us at sss at 3abn.org. S is right. in salvation and symbols and signs. Salvation in symbols. These are symbols and signs, but it's all about salvation. That's right. I think that's been made very clear here as yes. we've gone through this message. Yes. Amen. I just praise God for how He's led us. So, so we'll pick up in Revelation chapter 11 and probably around verse 14 mm -hmm. with this, the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe comes quickly. What is this third woe mm. that comes quickly? Because that's going to take us to the rest, the end of Revelation 11, and then we're going to be hitting Revelation 12, and ooh, I'm excited about that. Wow. I'm so excited. Another cliffhanger. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>